Welcome to the Course in Miracles. Tonight we do Lesson 139, 139. Now, please take note. This, this is a big deepening in the, in the road, in, a, in the path towards self-awakening or self-awareness, awareness of awareness. There's a radical shift happening at this stage of the course, and especially when, when and if you do the next review properly, which really means the abiding in silent stillness time when you do the review before you actually set forth the intent or the lesson of the day. So in the next section, in the review, it asks you to take some time, be still, totally silent, and then confirm the, the session, the, the lesson, the two lessons for the day, and then on the hour, every hour, repeat them. Now, that may sound a little excessive, but this is the turning point. This is the real trigger to self-awareness. What you'll realize is that as the appearance of the individual, so as the person, gets to a certain I'm using concessionary words here to explain the unexplainable, to explain the truth, which is unexplainable. As a person gets to that level of awakened awareness or Christ mind awareness, they naturally go quiet. They chop wood, they fetch water, they feed the kids, but they go quiet. The storytelling ends, the questions stop. The entertaining of Others' egoic needs comes to an end. They way past, way past people pleasing or needing to be anyone's messiah or, or guru or teacher. They really move into abidance. If they do speak, it's rare and it's seldom and it's often to give instructions for daily activity, they have no need to be seen in a certain way. They certainly have no need to explain anything or debate a point of view. They simply don't engage. If you take a leaf out of, there's no point in taking a leaf out of Jesus' life. We have no idea what Jesus' life was. We understand his teaching. One can, one can deduce through what he thought, that he was already in a quiet state and maybe would give a sermon once in a blue moon. And if you take a year's worth of teachings, they would make up two books, you know, if you were to teach once a week type of thing. So it's not assume that we know what Jesus did and didn't do. No one knows. No one can know. The past doesn't exist. What happened in the past never happened. We all only know the present awareness that gets brought through as we read his teachings, including that in the course. And the, the, the course is not Jesus' teaching. It's the Christ mind teaching. But we can take a leaf out of someone like Ramana Maharashi, who there's many a witness to, who, or even more recently, a Muji, for example, or a Rupert Spira. Um, yes, they may, as their daily jobs, be offering seminars and so on, but you won't find them constantly teaching. And you'll realize that if you listen closely, they're literally saying the same thing over and over again. There's very little to say when you get to that stage. And so the inner path is a path of clarity and consistent same level Peace, there's no high highs and low lows, which the ego thrives on. Ego needs you to get happy, happy, so that it can pull you down and it can pull you down into sad, sad, and keep you sad in the hope for next happy. So be aware that this is a big shift. And at this stage of the course, this is really where there's a transcendence takes place. And transcendence takes place in understanding only. There's no transcendence in a body. You actually transcend the body. You, are, you, you transcend the understanding that you're not a body. 
that you are energy, that energy called spirit, that you are free, and that you that energy, that spirit is exactly how God created. And that's true creation. So please take note that this is, a, if you're doing these exercises properly, the love of God, the energy of God, the grace of God, which is permanent, it doesn't stop. There's, God doesn't bestow grace on you once you mess up. It's a continuous stream of energy flow. Grace is the energy of God ever extending. Therefore, it's the self, the soul, the I am within you ever extending. And that is silent stillness. Light is silent. God is silent. Love is silent. Grace is silent. So there's a, it's coming. You want to be quiet. And so those who teach, teach what they most want to understand. Realize that. So if a teacher makes out to be all-knowing guru, it's their ego speaking. Those who really want to teach are still searching. And you may have a hang of thinking, why are you doing this? Oh, because I committed to doing this three years ago at the beginning of COVID. And I said I would take us all through this book and put it on YouTube for the appearance of later generations to have a, a next level Course in Miracles non-dual approach. So it's it still seems like I'm teaching. I'm literally just teaching. And for the record, the reason I don't reply, if you were lucky enough to get hold of my mobile number or my WhatsApp, the reason I don't reply to your questions is I'm not a counselor. Yes, I may have been qualified in counseling many years ago. I stopped practicing as a counselor 18 years ago. I have no desire to counsel because there's nothing in me that needs to reflect it back at me, and therefore there's nothing here to heal. The I am is all, all pervading, is all aware right now and has been for a while. And why am I saying this? Because healing and atonement you have to do for yourself. It's the, it's the core part of this today's lesson. I will accept atonement for myself. If you think you're here, your calling is to heal the world, you have mistaken your calling. You're going to argue, well, of course your ego will. You're not here to fix anyone. You're not here to heal the world. If you think the world needs healing, it's because you're spotting yourself in the people out there, like external activities of your dreaming mind. Everyone's calling. Everyone gets the calling. The calling within, and we say we have a calling. Yes, we have a calling. The calling is the voice for God calling us to be the extension of God's love eternally and to know ourselves as that. Of course, we put a filter in the way that we say, well, what, a calling is going to be my profession. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be an accountant, a librarian, a businessman, or a guru teacher, Shwam Adud. That's your misperceived ego, filtering the calling and putting it into worldly terms. And now you think you have a calling. I have a calling. There's one calling, and it calls to all its fractured selves to return to itself, the Christ mind awake. And so each fractured self heeds the call from within, the call from itself to its fractured body-mind appearances to dissolve and return as light back to its lit mind, Christ mind, enlightened Christ mind. As I've mentioned many times before, you, the individual, doesn't become enlightened. You're, the light inside you, the Christ inside you, is already lit. The rest of you dissolves in identity and once the body is put down, dies, the light within you returns to the Christ-lit mind, you never to be regurgitated, recycled, reincarnated into the dream of separation again. And the reason people don't like that is because they want to go to the spirit world and meet their little loved ones and their doggies and their catties and their mommies and then hope to come back again and love another more fantastical special love relationship because most spiritual people have failed in special love relationships. Most, not all. And special love relationships or the failure thereof is that one 
wonderful blessing we get that makes us say, oh, my God, well, nothing happens. Oh, my, why me? I'm lonely and miserable. And then we hear something like the path of a master is a lonely one. And, oh, that makes sense. And the ego says, okay, self-mastery is the way to go. And then we become reclusive and we go and study and we go awaken to self. And then you realize, oh, my gosh, never needed that anyway. <laughs> I will accept atonement for myself. That's all you need to do. Accept at one man. There's only one. Every body mind activity is designed to hurt you, harm you, or kill you. Everything in this world, even nature, you've got to know, oh, it's so beautiful, sunset. Pay close attention. Look at the blade of grass. Something's trying to kill something. Look a little further. Something's hunting something. Something's eating something. Something wants to eat something. The world that you have made in while you dream is a world where it cannot sustain energy no matter what appearance it takes and so it needs to destroy or eat something else in order to live see how long you can go without food here is the end of choice for here we come to a decision to accept ourselves as God created us. Now remember God didn't create us as individual body minds as much as we love the idea and you hope that God is hearing you, he's not. It's not. There is no you body mind. God simply hears the cries of help that come from his sleeping sun, sun symbol. The sun is asleep dreaming a dream where 8 billion characters are crying for help, and God is aware that his son is crying for help. He's unaware of the individual characters in the dream. The Christ mind, which dreams, which once was in complete darkness, the sleeping sun, now is lit. The Christ mind's aware of every character, but doesn't see the characters you see yourself. The way you see yourself is completely unique to your perspective. Not a single person in this planet or universe sees you the way you see yourself, including the Christ. Doesn't see you that way. The way you see yourself is your own made-up delusion of biblical distortions. All the stuff you dislike about yourself or you think is wrong with yourself, fractured self, we're talking about the separate body-mind, isn't true. It's your own judgment. As a man judges, as a woman judges, so she is judged by her own judgments. Here is the end of choice. We Here we come to a decision to accept ourselves as God created us. Perfect light energy ever extending. And what is choice except uncertainty of what we are? If you think you're sick, you don't know what you are. If you think you're unhappy, you don't know what you are. If you're wondering, you want something, you don't know what you are. If you're hoping for something, you don't know what you are. If you're asking questions, you don't know what you are. If you need to share something, you don't know what you are. If you need to say something, you don't know what you are. If you need to tell a story, you don't know what you are. If you truly knew what you were, you'd be totally silent. You certainly wouldn't be listening to me. And what is choice except uncertainty of what we are? The end. No debate. There is no doubt that is not rooted here. There is no question but reflects this one. There is no conflict that does not entail the single, simple, Question, what am I? Not who, what? Because the who am I? Who, who? The who who's? <laughs> I'm Batman. No. The who, you're, the who is a band that died a long time ago. There is no who. There's only what. And you will transcend the who into what. And transcendence comes through understanding. It's only the transcending of understanding. And what transcends understanding? The love of God transcends understanding into the knowing of myself as that which is the eternal extension of God. Transcendence is understanding, awakened to self. Yet who could ask this question? Question, what am I? Except one who has refused to recognize herself. Who? Who? Only refusal to accept yourself could make the question seem to be sincere. What am I? Whew. 
one stage I thought it was the most amazing question. And at one stage it was. The only thing that can be surely known by any living thing is what it is. From this one point of certainty, it looks on other things as certain as itself. At what stage does a baby realize it is like its parent? How long did it take you to figure out that your parents were fallible or just plainly full of shit or lost or just as lost as you, if not more? Does a cat know it's a cat? Mine certainly don't. They think they're goddesses with tails. Does a dog know it's a dog? Does a dog know that another dog is a dog and that humans are humans? At what stage does it figure it out? At what stage does it realize that little waggy bit at the end of its body is its own tail? At what stage do you realize that the silent stillness within you is the truth of what you are and everything else about you, lipstick and boots included, are not true? Uncertainty about what you must be is self-deception on a scale so vast its magnitude can hardly be conceived but can be put into a book, which we call the Bible. To be alive and not know what you, what you are, to know yourself, is to believe that you are really dead. Because you are. You're a little character running around in the dream that's never happened. But what is life except to be yourself? And what but you can be alive instead? Who is the doubter? What is it that she doubts? To whom does she question? Who can answer her? Who's asking? Who's telling? Who needs you to know how you feel, what you've accomplished? Spiritual people are no different to religious people. Oh, I've just found a new way. I've got to tell everybody and convert everybody and tell everybody how enlightened I am or what new realization I've come up with. Why? If you're going to share, share it through an understanding that benefits the other person and understanding how they can achieve that too. But who would want to tell it if they already realize everything is perfect? Everyone has a calling, and the calling is the essence of God calling. It's your true essence to be itself knowingly. Who can answer you? Who knows better? He merely states that he is not himself. And therefore, being something else becomes a questioner of what that something is. Yet he could never be alive unless, at all unless he knew the answer. If he asks, he does not know. If he asks as if he does not know, it merely shows that he does not want to be the thing he is. If you think you can be sick, you know not what you are, and you refuse to be the thing you are, the what you are. He has accepted it because he lives he against it and denied its worth and has decided that he does not know the only certainty by which he lives. That thing that makes your heart beat. What makes your heart beat? That energy that pulses through you, that triggers every cell to live. That's life itself calling you to be life itself, pure energy. The God seed, the scientists call it. No one can find it. Why? Cannot be seen, cannot be found. It's everywhere. Everything exists in it. How can you find the water if you're a fish? You are in it. And thus he becomes uncertain of his life. And what's the purpose? And what's its meaning? And what am I yet to do? And why did something plonk me at? And what's judging me? All of those silly questions. For what it is has been denied by him. For what you are is not recognized. It is for this denial that you need at one moment. I know the words atonement 
but break that word down at one minute, the recognition of one self. One self and one self. Your denial made no change in what you are. Does a character in your dream at night change who you are when you wake up in the morning? Even if it painted its bum people and ran around naked on its hands, singing yippee ki mother fluffer in your dream. Do you wake up and feel embarrassed? No matter what characters do what in your dream, doesn't change you. No matter what we, human race appearances, do in the Christ mind's dream, we change not the I am. But you have split your mind into what knows and what does not know the truth. Right-minded, Christ mind, wrong-minded, ego, but doesn't exist. So we only focus from here on outwards on Christ mind. You are yourself. There is no doubt of this. And yet you doubt it. But you do not ask what part of you can really doubt yourself or ask questions or tell stories. It cannot really be a part of you that asks this question, what am I? For it asks of one who knows the answer. Were that part, were it a part of you, then certainty would be impossible if the questioner was a part of you or was you. And that's why God is not asleep like some non-dual people say. Does asleep and dreaming this up? No. It's a part of God, son of God, asleep. A part of God, son, dreaming. Hence, there was a big bang. If God was dreaming, there wouldn't have been a big bang. There would have just been forever. Manifestation. And the universe would be real. And this universe is then, although it is an appearance in what is real, isn't real. God is not dreaming. The sun is. And the sun has dreamt yourself up. Atonement, at one moment, remedy is a strange idea that it is possible to doubt yourself and be assured of what you really are. This is the depth of madness. The idea that it's possible to doubt what you are. It's madness. And that's why the world is mad. Definitely not God. It's either the world is mad or God is batshit fucking crazy. And definitely it's not because that which we perceive as God or sense as it once you get to that place is unconditional love, silent stillness. That's not mad. Everything else is. Yet it is, is this universal question. This is the universal question of the world. This is the situation of the world. Madness. Look around you. It's all mad. The stuff we do. The pieces of clothing we put on and how much we pay for some of it. The type of food we eat, how much we pay for it. What does this mean except the world is batshit fucking crazy? Why share this madness in the sad belief that what is universal here is true? Why would you want to share in this madness? Why would you want to come back and do this all over again? Why do you still keep searching here? For happiness. Why do you think one other person is going to give you a special love relationship of biblical distortions that is going to be like a Mills and Boone's movie made into three dimension? You know, happily ever after in true reality is all there is, but in this illusion only lasts about 10 minutes after the movie. And then when you realize your popcorn's finished, you're miserable again. Nothing the world believes is true. Can we say this again? Nothing the world believes is true. If you believe it, it's a lie. You've been lied to. You've been taught it. It's a concept, a taken concept. You have thought that has taken form, thought form, spirit, thought form, which is now projected into physical form, Thought form is still there, the spirit. It's now projecting a spirit, a, a physical being, body, mind form. Believing that what you've been taught is true. And now it takes thought forms and, and thought forms within thought forms create millions of little thought forms. We call those ideas. And ideas just pop in. Whoa, I have an idea. There's appearing, an, there's a, a, an idea is appearing to me. I'm not talking inspiration. That's another thing. 
altogether. That's in, that's from the inside, energy. And that's the wanting to share of itself. When thoughts pop in, these are thought forms fracturing from the thought form you are. And the thought form you are has no idea what it is. So everything that you think is just absolute bullshit. It's nonsense. If you have a thought, it's bullshit. Don't think anymore. You'd be happier. Every person that is sick or unhappy is because they thought too much and thought too little of what they are. Ask too little of what they are. Ask too much of what they're not. Nothing the world believes. Remember the word, the word lie, be lie. V S is true. You either know or you don't know. And therefore you either know or you believe. Knowing requires no belief. Hence, I know all religions are false. Every single one of them. Including the Course in Miracles, if it makes you think you're believing in something, you do not understand the Course. It's not a religion. It's not a spiritual path. It's not a spiritual way. It's not a new age teaching. It is simple, logical, introspection, self-realization. This is not a path. And I know many people are trying to turn it into a foundation or a religion or a path or a way or a spiritual movement. It's not that. Because the minute you've done that, you've turned it into a cult. It's a self-learning. And that's why I'm sharing it for free. You can't follow me, can't join my club, can't get free T-shirts and underwear and sleep with the guru and send him money. No, I'm not interested. Leave me the fuck alone. I'm not popular. I don't want to be. I'm glad I'm not. Can't comment on my posts because I'm not interested in your opinion. Just don't give a fuck. Really don't care at all about what you think. Whatever anyone thinks isn't true. I don't care what I think. Why would I care what you think? You think my ego mind doesn't stop? It doesn't stop. It never stops. Not even Muji or Guruji or Ramana or Rupert Spira. Their thoughts don't stop. They lessen. They go softer. softer. I don't pay no more attention to it. So if I don't listen to Luji, the Guruji's thoughts, why would I listen to yours? The day you make up and it like lights up and it like stays lit and heals all the bunnies around you, that they'll listen to you. Until then, not interested. Nothing in the world believes it's true. And what I find amazing is that people pick up a book and go, here it is the truth, the truth. And then they quote the book to reference the book, to validate the book. If a book is true, then there has to be another, at least another three books that refer to it as true. And not written by people who believe in the book, people that oppose the book. They could say, well, possibility there is. So referencing a book, saying that it is the only book and it is written by God, a prat soman net like a cock. Flot cock prat. Oh, you're back. Be still. Silent is golden. Shut up and get rich. Nothing the world believes is true. Nada. Zero. Zilch. Fokoli. Nada. This Course in Miracles is not true. The very thing I'm sharing with you is not true. You want the truth? Listen very closely. Here it is. Did you hear that silence between the little rabbit ears? There's the truth. Nothing else is true. Nothing in the world is true. It is a place whose purpose is to be a home where those who claim they do not know themselves can come to question what it is they are, make up a thousand million stories and legends and myths and shove it down other people's throats and make money thereof so they can control everybody else's destiny and stay safe as long as possible while they still breathe and then leave a legacy behind, even though they can't remember because now they're dead, but someone will remember them even though no one really understands. And they will come again 
and again and again until the time atonement at one minute is accepted and they learn it is impossible to doubt yourself and not to be aware of what you are holy essence holy son of god you are that which is the extension of that which is we call god light ever extending everything else is bullshit. Any acceptance can be can be asked of you. Now, that's what religion does. So I'm not asking you to accept anything. Be thyself knowingly, for what you are is certain. And the only time you'll get it, I share with you my formula. It's for free. Shut up, sit down, be still, be silent. No special breathing technique, no special sitting technique. Don't have to face any, and just allow the being. Sink into the self. Sink into symbolic, our temple. Sink. Sink into the void. Sink into the silence. Abide and invite the memory of what you are back into yourself. The rest is done for you. You can't do it. It's impossible. You're dreaming. How can you wake yourself up? You're asking the spark, which is the life, the very breath of life, to awaken you. Because you're willing. And it happens a lot easier, a lot with a lot less drama once all the forgiveness work is done. Because if you haven't done the forgiveness work, the, what do you need to forgive? Your thoughts. No, but you need to forgive the past, he, she, he. No, they're all your thoughts. Because it's already done. So once you forgive the past, thoughts, the mind goes quiet. The ego mind goes quiet because there's nothing to complain about anymore. Ego mind needs something to complain about or something to look forward to. And so if there's nothing that it hopes for or something to blame or reject or deny, it goes quiet. And then when you abide in silent stillness, there's no ego chatter to interrupt your silent stillness. Like when Jesus went and prayed in, in, in the Garden of Gethsemane before they crucified him and the tempter and the devil came, the devil, she arrived there in a hot dress you know, push up bra and stilettos as a thought. And he said, get away from me, Satan. Only the only acceptance can be asked of you for what you are is certain. It is set forever in the holy mind of God, energy. And in your own holy mind, and therefore Holy Spirit mind, it is so far beyond all doubt and question that to ask what it must be is all the proof you need to show that you believe the contradiction that you know not what you cannot fail to know. How could you fail to know thyself unless you've believed just something else asking silly questions? Is this a question or a statement which denies itself in statement? Let us not allow our holy minds to occupy themselves with senseless musings such as questions or storytelling or resisting or complaining. Be still. In modern language, shut the fuck up. But it sounds more spiritual. Be still. And now I'm, I am love. It sounds very spiritual. Oh, it's beautiful. In the Luji school of awakening, you get a slap. And when your ear's ringing and you can hear Christ calling, shut the fuck up, be still, sit there, shut up, be quiet, leave you alone, you'll figure it out. But it's not a popular school. And the two students I had did run out of money. <laughs> we have a mission here. We did not come to reinforce the madness that we once believed in. And you need some Guruji enlightenment retreat. You go to a retreat to retreat from yourself. Stay home, save yourself the money and passport control and all that other shit. Let us not forget the goal that we accepted. We all accepted when we came into form. It is more than just our happiness alone we came to gain. Because if you think you've come to gain your happiness, you've come to a miserable planet for that. You should have gone to the Blue Star Kachina in the fourth dimension where the unicorns and the fairies live. The star children, all that shit. That, you would have been happier there. What we accept 
It was a joke. What we accept as what we are proclaims what everyone must be along with us. Fail not your brothers, nor fail yourself. Look loving on them. These thoughts that were made in fear become the thoughts of love that reflect the love you are back at you. Look lovingly on them, that they may know that they are part of you and you are them. Because the minute you try and be all spiritual and get off the grid and hide from the world and become reclusive, you're trying to hide. You're putting cloths over mirrors, hoping the mirrors go away. The images of you are still there, just hidden behind curtains. And this does atonement teach and demonstrate the oneness, capital O, of God's son, you, the true part of you that is dreaming you, the you you think you are, is unassailed by his beliefs. He knows not what he is. Today we accept atonement, not to change reality. You can change reality. Reality is reality forever. But merely to accept the truth about yourself and go your way rejoicing in the endless love of God, the endless energy which you are. It is but this that we are asked to do. It is but this that we ask that we will do today. So for five more minutes in the morning at night, we will devote and dedicate our minds to our assignment for today. We start with this review of what our mission is. And it's only a mission when you woke up. It was a mission impossible. It's a mission now done. I will accept the atonement for myself. For I remain as God created me. We have not lost the knowledge that God gave to us when he created us like him. Not our body minds, but that which dreams. We can remember it for everyone. For in creation are all minds as one. Because there aren't many minds as one mind fractured into what the appearance of eight billion minds. And in our memory is the recall. Action recall. How dear our brothers, how, how, how dear our brothers are to us in truth. Because they're fractures of ourselves. How much a part of us is every mind, every fractured mind. How faithful they have really been to us because they played out the script perfectly, including be the A-type soul or the B-type soul and the total R soul. Those that have hurt us have played out the role in gratitude to one another. We've come to play a drama dream. We've gotten onto a world stage where we've played out dreams of separation, hurt, fear, sin, and guilt so that each fractured individual character that appeared to take form could eventually say, fuck that, and awaken to self, there has to be a better way. And only then would we go inward and start searching for the truth. Because if it was all blissful angel music and fairies and unicorns and forever, ever happily after making love to you, the man, woman of your dream, you know, while you ate candy floss and floated on candy horses and and drank milkshake that never made you fat, you would still stay asleep not realizing you're dreaming a dream of separation because the love you are has no need for any of this worldly shit. There's nothing spiritual about anything in this world. No temple, no mosque, no pyramid, nothing. No religion, nothing in this world spiritual. It's all one fucking huge mockery to the son of God you are. The holiest place on earth is where an ancient hate, your heart, became here now a place of love. Be thyself knowingly. Know what you are. Be still and know I am is the truth of what you are. For your I am is the self-same essence as God. God's I am. The only I am there is. We have not lost the knowledge God gave us when he created us like him extension energy we can remember it for everyone for in creation are all minds as one it's what jesus did two thousand years ago i and my father are one he taught us of course we turned him crucified him and then turned him into a deity to be worshipped because that's how sick mankind is first we nail him to a fucking cross beat the shit out of him nail him to a cross stick him in a hole and only when who now we've turned him into a deity we need martyrs i mean if jesus wants to arrive now descend on a cloud, trust me, some farmer in the free state would take a shot at them or some American dude with, you know, a replica AK-47 would take a shot because it has to be the Antichrist. It's the devil. Mankind is just sick and perverted and absolutely fucking lost in translation. Don't look to man to fix you. Be still. 
answer the call to silence. Sink into the heart temple. And our memory is the recall of our, all our dear brothers are to us in truth. How much part of us is in every mind. How much part of us is in every mind. And remember, no one's going to know you. Oh, that person knows me. I'm so in love with them. No one knows you because there's no you to know. When you think someone knows you and you feel so appreciated that someone knows you, no, they're just validating your bullshit ego back at you. Stop your shit now. Oh, he knows me. No, he doesn't know you. He's just feeding hot air so you can get your panties. No one knows you. No one will know you because the you that you want to be known as does not exist in truth. And I can promise you everybody in your life knows you as a different person and has a completely different image of you in their head than you have of yourself. Every single one, including your mommy, you gave birth to you. And thanks for all creation and in the name of creator and his oneness with all aspects of creation, we repeat our dedication to our cause today each hour. Come on. Do you truly want to awaken? Each hour, come on. As we lay, lay aside all thoughts that would distract us from our holy aim, the only aim we have to awaken to self. For several minutes, let your mind be cleared of all the foolish cobwebs which the world would weave around the Holy Son of God, your dreaming mind, and learn the fragile nature of the chains, the thoughts, chains, that seem to keep the knowledge of yourself apart from your awareness, as you say. I will, I will, the world I will, I will accept the statement for myself. For I remain, the I am, myself, my soul, remains as God's self, God's soul created me. Is that a good smack upside the illusionary ear? May those with ears in their hearts hear the truth. Truth is simple. It's only complicated by bullshit questions, ideologies, and beliefs. Spiritual is a concept. Spirit is a word for the essence. Essence is a word for God. Like Tao. The Tao that can be named is not the eternal Tao. The essence that can be described is not the eternal essence. The word that can be named is not the eternal word. The word of God, his promise, is return to silent stillness and remember thyself. Then, while you appear in form, be thyself knowingly, and then act enthusiastically as you pour yourself enthusiastically, passionately into your world that you've created as the light which saves the world from being a world and returns it to the light it's always been. Salvation means letting go of this entire fiasco called the planet Earth, of this debaucherous thing called the universe, of this preposterous thing called what we call life, and return knowingly to the essence. God's will is that you let all of this go and return to him, her, it, knowingly as the extension of its ever-extending essence. That's it. Namaste. Which means please don't stay. Please go away. Think about what I've just said. Or don't think at all. Just absorb it. Let it filter through you and then stop thinking and just go about your day. Drop wood, fetch water, feed the kids and put a smile on your face. Because if you can't be joyously happy, then stop pretending to be miserable and just put a smile on your face. Please.